Hey, hey, what's going on, guys? D Xanax here, and today we're going to be talking about the Mr. Speaker's Aeon Flow, or let's call it the Eon Flow, because I don't know how to pronounce things, apparently. But for this review, I'm going to say Aeon, because it reminds me of that old cartoon, Aeon Flux. So the Aeon Flow is the latest headphone out of Mr. Speaker's to be produced in-house using their latest planar magnetic driver technology that they call Flow. So we'll go ahead and crack this bad boy open. So right off the bat, I really dig the box. It's very clean, very simple. There's no fluff to it. There's no 15 pound leather case that comes in it. It's just very small, very effective. It's got the nice uh, Aeon logo here that shines in the light. I like these boxes that just have that nice magnetic clasp that holds it together. And as you can see inside, you've got the nice Mr. Speaker's carrying case. This one is black. I know that the earlier ethers that came out came in a brown case, which I wasn't really digging the color, but the black looks, you know, classy and classic. It's not gaudy in any way, and it doesn't, it doesn't scream, hey, look at me, I'm an expensive pair of headphones, which sometimes can be a good thing when you're out and about. So these do retail for $7.99. I did pre-order mine, and when you pre-order yours, uh, there was a there was $100 off, so mine was uh, $6.99. Let's look and see what else is in the box here. You've got a couple of things, so let's pull these out. You've got uh, a quick user guide, kind of a care guide that sort of goes over the basics here. Um, it's got the warranty information and the contact information for Mr. Speakers. So we can open this up actually. Comes with a microfiber cloth. And so there's your certificate of authenticity right there. Now it does come with these as well. Um, they're just foam pads, just thin, fairly springy foam pads. And uh, I'll go over these in a little bit. All right, so let's just crack right into the meat and potatoes here. So as I said, it's got this nice hard clamshell case to protect them. And this thing is pretty great. I can throw it in my backpack and not worry at all. And it's fairly compact, right? So, so it's a good thing to have. And it's a nice inclusion with these headphones, especially at the price you pay. So let's go ahead and open these guys up right here. And boom, there's your headphones right there. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the looks in a minute. So inside the case, you've got this nice mesh here that holds your cable in. And of course it does come with what they call a dumber cable, which I suppose is a variation on their original dumb cable, which stands for distinctly unmagical, which I think is pretty clever marketing, calling your own cables dumb. I wasn't actually a big fan of the original dumb cables. They kinked up a lot and they were very unruly and hard to wind up. This dumber cable seems a little better. Uh, it is a, a softer fabric than the original dumb cable, but it does still use the same termination. And just like Mr. Speaker's Alpha headphones plus the Ether headphone series, these do use the, uh, I believe they're called E-ValueCon connectors. Um, probably the best connectors out there for headphones. I, I wish every headphone company used these, to be honest. They're very sturdy feeling and they click right in so easily and they lock in and they're not going anywhere. They're just super easy to connect. Basically all you have to do is just give it a little turn and it just, it basically just clicks right into place and that's not gonna go anywhere. And you have to actually pull this down for it to come out. It's very sturdy and it stays in there and it's just great. It's just a very satisfying feeling. Sticking that in the hole, just like that, and hearing that click, that's good stuff guys and girls. It is a pretty nice long cable, it's six feet long. It has a basic Y splitter that doesn't really have any branding or logos on it. Just simple and effective. With a quarter inch on one end and the, and of course it does unscrew to become an eighth inch. So overall, I mean, you know, the cable's fine, but me being me, of course, the wacky headphone guy had a custom cable made by my dudes at Norn Audio. I really love their cables and I'm in no way like affiliated with them. I don't try to sell their cables. I just love their work and I love the quality. I got the carbon fiber splitter to match the carbon fiber on the headphones. But at any rate, let's go ahead and get to why you're really here, the headphones themselves. So right off the bat, I think that they are a very interesting looking pair of headphones. I gotta say, the first time I actually saw a picture of these online when they first announced them, they were like kind of hidden in the shadows and sort of dark. And my honest to goodness gut reaction was, Ugh man, I'm not really digging the way those look. Now that I have them in person and in my hands, 
I think they still look pretty interesting. I mean, they're definitely unique. I really love the carbon fiber accent. I really wasn't sure if I was going to dig that, but uh, it turns out I do. Now in the light, it's got this nice kind of deep midnight blue sort of color. It does have this unique teardrop shape, uh, or as a friend of mine at work lovingly called them, elf ears. Now being that most of the inner cup is made out of this piece of carbon fiber, of course these are extremely light. Woo! I mean, these things are light as a feather, really, and they feel really great on your head. Now, just like many of other Mr. Speaker's headphones, it does have this nice soft leather band that's very sturdy, and it doesn't put any pressure points on your skull at all. It has a very nice even distribution, so even if these things were heavy, I don't think it'd be an issue, but they're so light that you barely even notice they're on your head, honestly. The yokes are made out of some sort of some sort of metal. Uh, I'm not really sure what the metal, what this metal is, but this band right here is made out of a nitinol memory metal. They use this metal in a lot of wire-framed glasses. It's extremely light and it's extremely bendable. So you could make loop-de-loops for with these headphones and they'll just come right back into shape. And there are two plastic clips here that hold your headband in. So one size says Aon and the other side says flow, and they do slide all the way up and down this Nyatal band. So even if your head was the size of a watermelon, I'm pretty sure you'd be all right. Now I'm talking about like one of those big watermelons you get during the summer. The cups themselves have a very nice paint job. It's very smooth. I don't believe they'd be very susceptible to scratching. The carbon fiber smudges very easily. I mean, it'll practically smudge just by looking at it. So you're constantly gonna be wiping fingerprints off of it. And that's why it comes with that nice soft microfiber cloth, of course. The pads are a synthetic leather, so they are vegan friendly. Not really sure why they didn't go with genuine leather or lambskin or anything like that, but they are extremely soft and there is a memory foam inside there, so it presses nicely against your head and it does not get very hot, really. I haven't really had a lot of issues with these things building up heat, so that's a good thing. Another important thing to note is that these pads are glued on. They are replaceable, but you will destroy the old pads by taking them off. So you're not gonna be doing a lot of pad swapping with these. Sorry, dudes. Now, whether or not you're a big fan of the teardrop design, one of the nice benefits of having this kind of a shape cup is, of course, they sit down on the desk very nicely and they stay straight up just like that. So you don't have to worry about them wobbling or falling off your desk. They just stay upright nicely. Now, previously, I did own the Mr. Speaker's Ether Open, and that was probably one of the most comfortable headphones I've ever owned. This is very close to that comfort level. These are extremely comfortable. I don't believe they're as comfortable as the Mr. Speaker's Ether, but these come very, very close behind it. They're just very light. They have a nice range of motion. They have plenty of headroom. So these would be extremely difficult to get a bad fit or a bad seal with these. They're just designed very, very well. That's one of the things that I've always admired about Dan's work over there at Mr. Speakers. He puts a lot of thought into comfort and it really shows with these. All right, guys, so now let's get into how they sound. As I said before, I did pre-order these and I had just been waiting and waiting and waiting. Took a little longer than I expected to get. Right when they came in, I was getting ready to go on a vacation. So I did take them with me and I threw my portable amp in my bag. So when I finally did sit down to listen to them, I gotta say guys, I wasn't really blown away. I was pretty impressed, but I certainly wasn't blown away. And I didn't hear that great treble that I was expecting to get out of these. Now I gotta say that the Mr. Speaker's Ether open version opened my eyes to how beautiful treble really can be when done right. It was a come to Jesus moment. So I was actually a little bit disappointed. That being said, my listening conditions weren't really that ideal, and come to find out that the portable amp I was using is actually a very warm amp, and it was not a good pairing for these headphones. So when I plugged it directly into my iPhone, believe it or not, I thought they were incredible. It just goes to show you with a lot of this talk about pairing different amps with different headphones, it really can make a difference. So what am I trying to say? Well, what I'm trying to say is yes, directly out of your iPhone or your Android phone, these things are gonna sound really good. Suddenly I did get that treble sparkle. Was it on the same level as the ether? No. So suddenly all was right with the world and I really enjoyed these things. Now I know burn-in is kind of like a religion. It's like you either subscribe to it or not. 
And maybe these things did have to burn in over the course of the last couple of weeks I've been listening. When I finally got home from my trip and I was able to hook this into my desktop amp and do some serious listening, do some critical listening, man, these things came to life. So the problem that I had with the Mr. Speaker's Ether, while I admired it for its technicality and its build quality, it was so incredibly neutral flat that music almost was boring and it was very thin sounding. Music didn't really have that life, you know, that musicality. This changes all of that. Whatever they did to tweak those flow drivers over there, man, it just brought out life in music. The detail is absolutely there, yet not without that magnification that the ether gives you. Where I felt the ether had almost no bass, this thing definitely has some nice sub bass going on. As a matter of fact, on several tracks, I was quite surprised how much bass I was feeling. I mean, I had to take these off and look at them just to remind myself what pair I was listening to again. I dare say it's a fun signature. Overall soundstage for a closed headphone is what I would consider to be above average. A really nice amount of height to it, and this instrument separation is excellent. Now let's get into the mids, gang. So my favorite aspect of the Mr. Speaker's Ether were vocals. Vocals had this quality of sort of just floating in front of you. And again, very neutral, but very detailed, very airy. And these do maintain that quality, which is awesome because that was my favorite part of the ether. I would say that vocals on these are probably amongst some of the best I've ever heard on a headphone, open or closed. They're detailed, they don't sound super heavy. Probably some of the smoothest and sexiest vocals this side of an Odyssey LCD-3. I mean, for example, just check out Mile on the Moon by Sarah Jaros. I mean, guys, if it doesn't make you want to melt like a stick of butter on a tin roof in the middle of July, I don't know what will. The Mr. Speaker's Ether, in terms of treble and treble extension and treble sparkle, it was definitely a come to Jesus moment for me. And while the Aeon doesn't quite take it to that level, it's very, very close, very pleasant, never sibilant, and just very enjoyable. From cymbal crashes to plucks on a very high note on a harp, everything just has this very nice soft resonance and this sparkle that just kind of extends outside of the range of hearing. It's really quite good. Rock guitar strings have that nice crunchiness to them, and it never sounds unnatural. Fairly pushed back, not really ever in your face, but sort of just kind of floating right there in the middle. But I gotta reiterate, for vocal music, these are now my go-to headphones. So that brings us to these foam inserts that they sent along with the Mr. Speaker's Aeon. And these are shaped just like the diameter of the cup, so obviously they just kind of go right on in there. Now in the documentation, it says that it adds a little bump to the mid-range and gives the mid-bass a little more body. What I found is that it actually kind of takes away from the vocals, though. But what I found was that you were starting to lose detail, especially in tunes like jazz where there might be an upright bass playing. I started missing that detail in the bass strings. You didn't get a lot of that vibration. Personally, I wasn't a big fan of that, so I took them out. But they're there to use if you so desire. I wouldn't say that it was night and day. It was pretty subtle, and I had to really critically listen. If you're a passive listener, honestly, I don't think you'd really hear much of a difference one way or the other. But now that brings us to a whole other can of worms. Literally the day after I started shooting this video and talking about the build quality, I got an email from Dan Clark at Mr. Speakers. Apparently on some of the pre-order versions of this headphone, there's an issue with this port. And I believe it's the port that's down here by the connectors. So according to the email on some of the pre-order production units, there's an issue that is actually changing the sound. And apparently the one that I was sent was one of the affected units. So the email reads, and I quote, units that are affected have a decrease in output of three to six decibels from around 120 to 240 hertz and an increase of output from about 80 to 110 hertz. It goes on to say, in many cases, the mid bass may be elevated one to two decibels and sound slightly boomy and uncontrolled. Once my unit is serviced, I should experience the following changes. Bass scales will sound more linear, bass will be better controlled and less boomy, vocals will sound fuller and less breathy, sub bass and bass output will be unaffected, 
So obviously, as I stated in my review, the vocals were one of my favorite things about these headphones. Do I think they could sound fuller? Possibly they could sound fuller, but to my ears and to the overall sound signature, I think the vocals are pretty spot on for my tastes. But of course we all hear things differently and I could totally see someone wanting a little bit richer mid-range, a little bit fuller sounding vocals with a little more weight to them. And honestly, maybe I could go for that with these. Maybe if I heard that, I would be like, whoa man, that's, that's the magic sauce right there, guys. So am I going to send these in to be serviced? Um, I've been thinking about it, and I think maybe I will, only because, personally, I want to hear a headphone as it was meant to be heard. If anything, it's just going to make them better. So I probably will send them out. It's a free service. They pay for the shipping and everything. They did apologize, and I think it's great that the company is transparent, and I think that it shows how dedicated they are to making a great sounding pair of headphones and of course I do applaud them for that and I don't think it takes away from my overall experience of this headphone I still think it's a great set of headphones what I may do is I might do a follow-up review after I've gotten them back I don't know how long it's gonna take to get them back but if and when I get them back and I think that the sound signature has changed significantly enough to warrant a follow-up video I will definitely upload that soon. So that's the Mr. Speaker's Aeon Flow. Pretty damn impressive if you ask me. Thumbs up. But I gotta say guys, I'm not gonna let that email I got literally in the middle of my review change any of my thoughts about this headphone. This is a very, very good pair of headphones. If you were like me and the neutral flat nature of the ether kind of turned you off a little bit, maybe you wish there was, there was more meat on the bones, I really think you're gonna like these because these things not only have the bones, but they definitely have that meat. I think they nailed it. It's got that toe tapping, smile inducing mu musicality and that beautiful treble sparkle that just sort of seals the deal on the whole package. Definitely check these out though, guys. I mean, these, these are impressive and these just show you how far the planar magnetic driver has come. So let me know what you think in the comments, guys. If you think that uh, the whole recall thing is a mistake, or if you think it's a good thing, let me know. If you have any other questions, I'll do the best I can to answer them. And uh, hey man, thanks for watching guys. Happy listening.